Hello and welcome to the 101 Earth Observation Virtual Lecture Series. This series is delivered by the Satellite Applications Catapult in partnership with Wild Labs. This lecture is about a first overview of application. So what remote sensing can actually do? Let's start having a look of some potential application or some examples of use of remote sensing images. What we see here it's an image in high resolution, optical image, from a sensor called Worldview 2 at about 50 centimeter of uh, spatial resolution that shows the evolution of a refugee camp in Jordan, the Al Zatari refugee camp. This is actually a series of images. So we see in 2011 how the land was, 2012. 13 till to the last one here. So what we have seen here is how the refugee camp evolved through time. So we can see visible area of expansion. So this is particularly important clearly you know, for planning. So to understand, for example, preparation to, you know, to accommodate the, 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 the number of refugees. So this, this is done simply by inspecting that area in high resolution with optical data. Another use of high resolution data, optical data, is to evaluate impacts of natural hazards, such as a tsunami. So in this case, uh, we can see uh, the, a region in, in Thailand, which is like uh, heavily affected by a tsunami in 2004. So we can see the image before the tsunami and after. So clearly we can appreciate the destruction in this case caused by the tsunami itself. Another use of high resolution data is to look for example and to plan for example um, crowd, to map crowds. This example here is over Munich uh, at Oktoberfest. And we see, just zooming in the image, how it's actually possible to see individual persons there. Uh, this, is, this is particularly relevant in, in events like this one, where like lots of people attend to direct, direct crowds. But I think what is nice here is to appreciate really the detail uh, and, the, and, the, and the spatial resolution of the image. By combining uh, different sources of images, it's actually possible to create digital elevation models. So we see an example here of a digital elevation model over, over London. There is, we need a specific sensor configuration for, to, to generate this sort of, this sort of uh, imagery. But this is again something that is quite common, no? so that we see when we again we uh, you know we look at our at our phone at applications that they use this information. So this sort of information is derived with remote sensing. Another type of application, which is a very uh, remote sensing application, is the land cover classification. I showcased in a previous video how each part of the land behaves differently in terms of spectral uh, characteristic depending on the land itself. By using this, this information, we can create a description of the land depending on the land cover, such as in this case over Munich, the Munich area in Germany. If we just uh, take one of the, of, of, of the land cover, for example, urban, uh, we can see evolution of cities. So in this case, we see uh, Istanbul in Turkey in different tiers, and we can study how the city evolved through time. So 75, 90, 2000, and 2010. So we see how basically the city expands through the uh, Bosphorus area. Meteorological data, it's, uh, um, it's an important aspect of, of, of remote sensing. So in this case, we see uh, there's no cover in Europe through uh, time. This has been generated by the German Aerospace Center, which you have also seen in previous, in previous si uh, slides. Uh, it's, it's also called DLR. 
So uh, in, uh, in, this, in this slide, we see areas that are permanently slow cover or we can appreciate the mean, the mean snow cover per, per year. So we can do studies, you know, that, that study the, 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 the snow, no? the, in the presence of snow. We can focus on specific components of the atmosphere as well, such as NO2, pollution. Uh, what we see here, um, it's an image, it's a difference actually, between two different times to see the change in, in NO2. So what is blue in this image has a decrease in NO2 and what is red has an increase in NO2 in two different times, in this case 2013 and 2007. So quite some time ago. Anyhow, uh, you can see, you know, areas that are subject to a, a decrease in pollution. Like in this case, we see the, the United Kingdom and some, some areas in Europe um, or some areas that they actually had an increase in pollution, such as uh, some areas in, in, in Asia. Uh, what we, there is actually also some, some decrease probably in, around the Hong Kong area down, down there. Anyhow, this is good to appreciate, uh, you know, pollution and, and to monitor it. We can see actually uh, these and the impact, uh, the impact that COVID had uh, on, on those, on, the, on, on, on NO2 again. So we see an example here over the, over the United Kingdom, where we see that during COVID time, uh, the lockdown period uh, in 2020, uh, we had like those level of, of NO2 uh, level, while uh, for pre-COVID period, so on the, on the right, we have a much higher level of pollution. So you can easily appreciate this by, by looking at the color scale. Green, in this case, it's a low quantity of NO2, while red or violet is a, is a high level. So this is clearly, uh, clearly, uh, you know, we can clearly appreciate this by looking at these images.